uh, just to let you know that we are recording uh, and the recording uh, of this will be available uh, via our YouTube, our Six Form YouTube channel. Uh, please don't worry uh, if you are not uh, sort of one of the co-hosts, then you won't be featured on there. It will just be our lovely faces. Uh, so, but thank you very much for joining us. It is great to see so many of you here this evening. Uh, I'm Laura Stanley. I am one of the Pathways and Progress Leaders uh, in the Sixth Form at Ackland Burley. Um, I'll just uh, do a very quick introduction to uh, the other members of the team who will be with us this evening. Uh, we've got Anna Rivington, who's the Director of Learning for Key Stage 5, just giving you a little wave. Uh, we've got Michael Liu, who's also a Progress and Pathways Leader. Uh, and we've got Liz Collins, who is one of the Heads of Year uh, in Key Stage 5. And you're going to be hearing from all of us at various points through the presentation this evening. So uh, we're going to try and keep it uh, as quick as we can, um, but we have got quite a lot of information to get through. If you have got questions as we're going, there is a chat function on Zoom. If you just hover your uh, cursor over the screen, you'll get a little bar that pops up at the bottom and you'll see a speech bubble that says chat. If you click on that, then you will be able to send us a message. If you have got any questions, please feel free to, uh, to type them in the chat as we go. And then at the end of the presentation, uh, we will address those questions for you if we have an answer already answered your questions. Uh, likewise, if you've got any specific questions about particular children or circumstances that apply to a specific student, uh, please feel free to wait at the end and, uh, and ask us on a one-to-one on -a -one level if, uh, if that applies to you. Uh, lovely. So without, we will get going. We're going to share a screen and we will bob in and out of um, being on screen in real life um, and then have a PowerPoint so that you're not um, uh, suffering too much death by PowerPoint. But um, forgive us. There's a lot of information. And also, Laura, do you just want to say where the PowerPoint will be, as well as the whole presentation being recorded? This PowerPoint will also be uploaded onto the website, the Atkin Burley website um, in the sixth form area. Do we put mm -hmm. it anywhere else? I cannot remember. Uh no, it goes in the sixth form area, which you will be able to find uh, really easily on the website, uh, as if, if you just go to Ackham Burley and then go to the sixth form section. But I will also put uh, that information in the family bulletin next week. So if you uh, if you can't if you don't quite remember it, then it will be in the family bulletin, and the direct link to the recording on the YouTube channel will be in there too. Perfect. Thank you. So let's get started. Um, as Laura said. Um, we are the Key Stage 5 team. Apologies from um, Ron Stokes today, who is the other year team leader. He's, he's, he's um, unwell this evening, but many of you, um, if you've had students at Ackland Burley, will, will know Ron. So we, I'm Anna Remington. I'm the Director of Learning for Key Stage 5. What that means is I'm the overall kind of strategic person in, in charge of the sixth form and have an overview of both year 12 and 13 in terms of their progress and pathways and so on. Then we've got Ron and we've got Liz. And Liz, do you just want to say something about your kind of experience in the school and uh, your and then your path into the sixth form just briefly? Yes. So I've been um, at Ackland Burley for five years now um, and I've been a year team leader across the Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 uh, moving into sixth form this year. So uh, the idea is me and Ron both work across both years um, as heads of years, but we've got sort of different responsibilities within those um, areas. So, for example, I'm sort of particularly looking at personal development. I'm looking at the quality of um, education, teaching and learning and enrichment. Um, and uh, Ron is looking at a lot of the sort of other like pastoral sort of areas as well so rather than it being sort of a single head of year four year 12 and year 13 and um, we're yeah divided in responsibilities but yeah it's great to be part of the sixth form team so I've just started um, within Key Stage 5 this year. And you're a really experienced Key Stage 5 teacher aren't you as well? Yes I, I also so teach sociology yeah um, A level as well. I'm so Mary Minton, thank you. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, Valerie. Are you okay to mute yourself? Yes, <laughs> Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Okay, um, so we've got Liz, we've got Ron, we've also got, of course, Laura, who's kind of hosting the webinar. Do you just want to say something about your role briefly, Laura? Uh, absolutely. Uh, like Liz, I've been at Ackland Burley for five years. Um, I am one of the Pathways and Progress leaders. Uh, my area of uh, specialty is around pathways. So what our students do after Key Stage 4 and after Key Stage 5. Um, I look after uh, HE advice, university admissions, UCAS coordination, uh, anything to do with FE or HE, uh, anything to do with, as I say, destinations. Um, and I'm also the EPQ coordinator. 
And lastly, Mr. Lou, Michael, do you want to just say briefly your, your role in the sixth mm. form? Uh, evening everyone, my name is Michael Liu, I'm the other Progress and Pathway Lead. Um, a part of my role is actually to support with the academic progress of the students within the cohort, but also lead on pastoral care, so that's your mental and physical well-being of our students. Um, I work closely with Elizabeth and also Ron uh, in um, planning and obviously implementing action points uh, to support our kids further, and I also pass on to obviously Laura for further education and um, that's my role in a nutshell. Thanks so much, Michael. Uh, the other really important person on that slide, who I'm sure quite a few of you will, will, will get to know, is our sixth form administrator, um, Linda Lyons. Um, she's important for you to know for parents because she is the person that you report absence to. And we're going to talk about that a bit later on. But she's also um, our administrator who's in the sixth form office every day. Um, and she's the person you can pick up the, the phone to if you need to get a message to any of us. Um, me and Liz, for example, teach. So does Laura. Um, you may not be able to get us. But if you just aren't sure who to get through to have got a general inquiry, do phone Linda. She's really friendly you know, and gets to know lots of our parents. And that's great. OK, so moving on, um, obviously you have um, your child has joined the sixth form consortium. Um, so we're the Ackland Burley School in the consortium, and that means that's your child's base school. Um, so they're based with us. That's where their tutor group is. And some of you, all of their lessons will be at um, Ackland Burley. But um, most of our students do go to other, to other schools for at least one of their lessons. And that little infographic map, that just shows you how close all the schools are. Um, so they are very close and walkable, um, so there's absolutely uh, no excuse for, for being late to a lesson at LSU, it takes about six minutes. And the way the timetables work is it's all very nice and um, cleanly done, so there's always a either break or lunchtime or the beginning or the end of the day to get to those, to those um, other venues. So the slide now kind of shows what our vision is for your child at the end of two years. We want our students to be independent, reflective learners who achieve really well, and you'll find out a bit more about their kind of destinations. And we also want to present with lots of opportunities and choices. Oh, <coughs> excuse me, I seem to have developed a really annoying Zoom cough um, in the last 10 minutes, which um, apologies for that. And what I spoke, spoke to um, the children about in the first assembly, actually, was about taking up opportunities and making the most of every opportunity that we, we invite them to, whether that's enrichment, whether that's summer schools, whether that's um, helping run a club in the lower school, um, all sorts of things that might, will be presented to them and for them to be, feel a bit out of their comfort zone sometimes. And that's what we want for them to try new things. And of course, we want them all to be part of and contribute to our community and mature and happy young adults. So that's our sort of end point. Um, and if we go on to the next slide, well, this is sort of two years time for your um, child. And this was our, our, our results day in August of 2021. And this gives you a bit of an overview about our year 13s last year and where they went. So you get a sort of sense of our sixth form. Um, Laura, did you want to say anything at this point to illuminate any of those bits or is it pretty self-explanatory? It's quite self-explanatory, but just to say that we have incredibly impressive progression to HE, if that is what your student wants to do when they finish their time with us, regardless of whether they study A-levels, B-tech, uh, C-tech, or a combination of the above, the vast majority of our students go on to university. But if that is not uh, right for them, then we do have uh, you know, plenty of other pathways as well that we do support them in. And as you can see, we do keep really good tabs on our students. We know where they go and what they do, and they approach that in a really informed uh, and, you know, and prepared way. Thanks so much, Laura. Okay, um, we're now going to, I'm going to hand over to Liz, who's going to talk just a bit about the role of the tutor. The tutors, all of your children have a tutor. Um, and that person is on their timetable. Um, and Liz is just going to talk a bit about the role of the tutor and how the tutor kind of fits in to the Key Stage 5 team, Liz. Okay, yes, yeah. so we have, um, just as in sort of lower school and Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4, um, yeah, all students have a tutor and the tutor is just as important um, as in previous years. They continue to be your sort of first port of call for contact. Um, so any sort of concerns or anything that you, any information that you want to pass on, or if you're wanting a sort of general update on how they might be doing, 
you would go to the tutor first of all, um, who will certainly be able, you know, will know the children well, but also will be able to pass on any sort of other sort of queries to the rest of the Key Stage 5 team. Um, the tutors are responsible for a range of sort of different things coming from like the academic progress um, and then they will be sort of running interventions and um, having really closely monitoring students when we sort of are concerned about academic progress. Um, they're also obviously responsible for looking at attendance, punctuality, so lateness to lessons or lateness to school, um, if they're worried, if teachers have sort of commented on things like a lack of focus um, and also how they're sort of using that that supervised study time because we recognize that it is you know it is a big jump coming from a very very sort of structured environment of um being in sort of year 11 and obviously you've got a bit more sort of well, what might appear to be free time on their hands and um, so it's, it's really good that they maintain this sort of close contact with their tutors and they have those tutors over the two years and they will also be responsible for sort of planning their progress and looking at the next step so what they want to do after school um, and the pathways that would be suitable for them um, so they see them at the moment um, in AM registration each morning if they have a lesson at Ackland Burley for period one but the time that absolutely everybody sees their tutor as well is during personal development which is period three on a Monday um, which is a compulsory session it's just like a lesson and actually if we go on to the next slide you'll see um, oh not the next slide sorry in a few slides time we'll see that what that looks like in the timetable just before we do that though um, these are the tutors for all of the students in year 12 and um, hopefully you'll be aware of who your tutor uh, students tutor is already but if you're not there's our list we've got Porno Daniel, Stella James, Amy Luck, Lily Malik, Andrea Solat and Anita Walker. Um, all teachers um, across the school many of them teach Key Stage 5 as well and they've got sort of fantastic experience of working across the school and are all really approachable really supportive so if you do have any sort of concerns or you just want to sort of touch base I think a lot of them have contacted you already and um, please feel free to email them to call or emails always easier with teachers I think initially um, and then it's just their, their their email details are there and they're also on the website and this PowerPoint is saved so please do contact them and don't feel sort of worried about doing that because they expect and it's part of their job obviously to be maintaining that contact with parents. Brilliant thanks Liz a, a good thing to do after this um, webinar actually is to ask your child who their tutor is and if they don't know that is that is slightly problematic okay um, the, but the way that you can check who their tutor is is you can look on their timetable and because in their timetable Monday period three there's an initial for who that person is um, and if you still don't get aren't sure please just ask us and email us and we can tell you who their tutor is. OK, so I'm going to hand over to Mr. Lou now. Um, are you all right to talk about attendance now, um, Michael? Sure, so, all right, over so to I, you. Uh, just a brief summary of attendance. Um, there is an expectation that all students attend lessons on time and to every single lesson, including PD. Um, for those students, we understand that, you know, things could happen and they could become late. As a result, we've actually implemented late slips. So they need to arrive to the sixth form common room uh, to see uh, Linda or myself to collect a late slip. Um, this is then tallied up throughout the week. And if it's above a certain threshold, which is 20 minutes of late within a week, um, they get to meet Mr. Stokes for uh, Friday's detention. And... Um, with that, I understand that students may not be able to attend every lesson if they're ill, if they have a medical appointment, et cetera. This actually needs to be um, authorized by yourself, the parent or carer. We cannot have students message myself or any other teacher stating that they're sick. Um, this needs to actually come from a parent or guardian. Um, we've had six formers do it in the past. It's just obviously a safeguarding concern where we need to know that you know that your, your child is ill or off school, et cetera. And so um, Linda's obviously the best person, the number's there, um, but if you have any questions after and you want a direct contact, please uh, do email, email myself and I'll be able to send that across to you. That's brilliant, thanks Michael. Um, yeah, that, that email, Laura, do you mind just looking back one, um, one second? That highlighted number then, that's quite a good one, um, just to put in your phone, if you just remember the extension, um, extension, 1002 that's the absence line um, for sixth form absence um, and likely like Michael said students can't authorize themselves that's brilliant 
Okay, so um, Miss Collins is going. Um, Miss Collins, Liz is going to talk about uh, timetables and how they work. And so, to give you an idea of um, if you've seen your child's timetable, uh, they should have, they'll have a physical copy, but they'll also probably have taken a picture of it on their phone. That's what we encourage them to do. Um, it's just sort of how that works and, and what that looks like across a week. So over to you, Liz. Okay, so yes, their timetable looks a little bit different from um, year 11, because obviously they've got quite a few blanks. Um, we're very keen that these aren't seen as being, you know, free periods or where they can just sort of sort of stay at home or go home or sort of use it as, as social time. Um, we have a really good study area at school and actually there's also one in the main Le Swap building and each of the different um, um, Le Swap schools. Um, and so instead of it being a free period, it is independent study time. And part of being in the sixth form and something that we will help them do as well is about um, being able to sort of develop those independent study skills and use that time wisely because it is an expectation that they are doing sort of more work outside of lessons than they previously would have been doing um, you know, in their lower school experience. Um, so yeah, this is what the timetable looks like. If you haven't seen it, um, try to ask them where their timetable is. They probably have got a copy on their phone as well and, and have a look at it so that you're aware of, of when they're like particularly busy days in, are, um, where they should be, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as I mentioned before, they have a tutorial or personal development session, we call it, um, every Monday period free. And because this isn't one of the subjects, often sometimes people might think, oh, well, that's not, not you know, as important. But it's really important because that is when we use the time to communicate any really important messages about anything coming up. We often have assemblies. Uh, we have personal development sessions, which are led very much. Um, and, and we want to do this even more so sort of based on what students are interested in and want to learn about. So, for example, at the moment we're doing um, we're focusing on finance because lots of students have said, they sort of feel like they leave school and, and don't know very much about, you know, credit cards, debit cards, mortgages, student loans. So we are sort of responsive to what they want to do in those sessions um, alongside using them for finding out about UCAS um, and careers. So really, really important. And it is something that we, we closely monitor in terms of their attendance as well. So we would be getting in touch if, you know, if they if they stopped sort of coming. Um, I mentioned before as well that if they they are expected to come in for AM registration as well and to see their tutor uh, that's slightly more complicated because it's it's if they have a period one lesson at Ackland Burley so if they are at a different school or if they're not in till period three we don't expect them to register but this should be happening sort of several times a week and it's a really useful way of them as well to sort of keep seeing their tutors keep in the loop and be able again to sort of hear any important messages and just have maintain that contact. Um, alongside that, as it says on the slide, uh, just a note that courses, now that we have gone through the, um, the period at the start of term where, where students are able to make um, course changes, this doesn't usually happen then after the four week induction period. Um, it's been widely publicised to students the past few, uh, the, the first month, how to sort of change if they were unhappy or how to put forward an application to change. Um, but that doesn't happen afterwards because obviously it would be really disruptive to the courses and it would mean a lot of lost learning already. So their timetable as it is now should be um, as it, you know, it continues to look for the next year and then on into year 13 as well. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Liz. Um, I'm just going to briefly take you through the um, kind of A level and the AS levels and the kind of differences with those. Um, so we've got a combination at, um, at Burley and actually quite a lot of our students do a combination of a BTEC or a CTEC with an A level. Um, so lots of this is going to be relevant for kind of um, for you for, for you view in different ways actually so the basics around a levels and we do very few as levels so i'll talk about it as a levels is that your child will have 10 taught hours per fortnight per a level and predominantly that's linear with the the examination that counts at the end of year 13 we don't um do AS levels at the end of um, year 12. And non-exam assessment um, uh, for most subjects, i.e. what used to be called coursework, is generally not no more than 20%. I'm an English teacher, and our, our English literature coursework, NEA is, is worth 20%. In practical subjects, something like art A level, clearly that's, clearly that's different, but for kind of written subjects, um, 
the coursework, if there is it, if there is coursework, something like maths, for example, has no coursework, uh, biology, no coursework, um, is no more than 20 percent. Um, I draw your attention to those of you whose children take um, A-levels to the high stakes exam in April, uh, oh, 2022. There's our first mistake, probably our only one, hopefully. These are April 2022, um, and these are the high stakes exams at the end of year 12, important markers of current attainment at the end of year 12. And they are the sort of gateway exams to be able to transition into year 13. Um, with the, all the dates for these um, have actually been sent out to people in a letter, but the dates are coming up again in this presentation. And A-levels are graded in the way they've always been graded, um, except that you can now get an A-star, but they go from A-star to E. And if we go on to the BTEC and the CTEC, the structure for those, and again, we've got lots of students doing um, BTECs and Cambridge technicals, and with any applied course, the ones we run at Atkin Burley are applied science, art, performing arts, and then we do the digital media. They'll have 22 periods across two weeks because all of ours are double awards. And the key thing to know if your child is doing a BTEC or a CTEC is that the um, assessment is spread across year 12 and 13. That's the difference with A-level. They do have to really hit the ground running, our um, applied students, um, because they are going to be assessed. The first kind of um, tranche of, ex of exams is actually in January for some of the um, applied courses. So, for example, applied science have got a module in January. So um, your child will be told when they've got their um, exams, but they are earlier than obviously they are. The, they're not just at the end of the course like they are for A levels. And the way that BTECs um, are graded um, is a distinction um, going from distinction star down to which is D asterisk D asterisk to PP, which is pass pass. And that's um, and these awards uh, qualifications are equivalent to two A levels in terms of UCAS points. There's no there's no difference in terms of the value of UCAS points. OK, so if we um, move on, I'm going to hand over to Miss Stanley, who's going to just talk a bit about the extended project qualification that um, quite a few of your children have signed up for. So, Laura, over to you on EPQ. Yeah, just very, very briefly, because we've done amazingly with EPQ this year and we've got so many sign ups. We're really, really pleased. Uh, EPQ starts is starting now. It starts a little bit later, sort of after the induction period for year 12, uh, because it does take a very different format to a normal A level or an AS level. Uh, EPQ, it stands for Extended Project Qualification and it is an independent research-based qualification. Uh, it has just one contact hour a week, which is taught usually via Teams, um, and the rest of the uh, EPQ is done via guided independent work. Uh, you have an EPQ supervisor uh, who, who is, if, if, for those of you who have experience of, of you be supervision at university, it takes a similar structure to that, um, and that supervisor will support a student with their uh, with their EPQ, but it very much comes down to that student to design, to research and to structure it for themselves. Uh, it's assessed via a research portfolio a and a log, um, and then either a 5,000 word essay or an artifact with an artifact report. The student chooses how they want to submit their work. Um, and it is graded from A star down to E. It's got the same number of UCAS points as an AS level, and it counts the same as an AS level when students apply to university. It is very much uh, sort of valued by universities because it does teach so many skills around independent work, around referencing, around research, around project management. Um, and we are really pleased that we've had so many students really enthusiastically join up this year. and We're really looking forward to guiding them through it. Uh, just to lead on uh, from that, because we've just mentioned UCAS points uh, a few times there, if you're not quite familiar with the uh, with the UK uh, university admission system, it runs on something called UCAS points. Um, all level three qualifications, so A levels, AS, BTEC, CAMTEC, EPQs, are all worth a certain number of points. And each university will set what points is are required for entry onto a particular course. So for example, a university might ask for three B grades to uh, to secure a place on a on a history degree, for example, which is the same as 120 UCAS points. And usually in, in 
the vast, vast majority of cases, nearly every single case, uh, the university will accept uh, a BTEC and the UCAS points from a BTEC uh, just as readily as they accept the UCAS points from an A level. There are very, very tiny few uh, exceptions to that around medicine and around some Oxford and Cambridge courses, but they are they are tiny. Uh, so this is what we uh, what we mean when we're talking about UCAS points. Most universities are looking for a student to have two and a half plus A levels worth of UCAS points, which is why our students doing a, a BTEC, a double award BTEC, will be encouraged to do another level qualification, level three qualification alongside it, such as Math Studies AS or such as an EPQ, to make sure they've got those points if they do decide to go on to university. Speaking of, just um, while we're talking about universities, just a little glimpse of where some of our students have gone this year. So our students starting right now at the end of September, beginning of October, uh, this is where they are all over the country doing all different kinds of, of degrees in pretty much every uh, sort of subject sector you can think of. Um, we have the same the same percentage of students studying BTEX and CTEX go to university as our A level students. There is no difference in our progression uh, with those students. So there are some old fashioned ideas around uh, sometimes that um, A levels are better or, or easier to get into university with. It is not the case. Um, as I say, we there are just a tiny, tiny handful of courses. Uh, for which that is the case, but we have huge successes uh, with our students doing all kinds of qualifications going all over the country. Uh, Anna, thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Laura. Uh, I'm just going to talk about how we are going to communicate with you. Um, and we will be reporting home regularly during um, your the time your child is with us. Um, the first thing um, to let you know is that at the moment, well, next week, staff will be entering um, induction kind of thoughts about your child. And that will be not grades yet, but whether they are sort of ready for A-levels or BTECs, are they ready but with need some intervention or are we actually quite concerned that they haven't really stepped up and made that transition successfully? Um, the this information is going to be sent home in the second uh, week of October, so you will receive that with a kind of key and explanation about what that all means. And then during the year, there's a regular cycle of data being sent home to you. Um, there's also student progress reviews when tutors have interviews with, with um, their students, their tutees, to discuss their progress. Um, Parents evening, the main parents evening for year 12 is actually quite is, is in the summer term. It's in it's in July because and we have it after they've done their transition um, exams, the, H the HSEs. There will be an earlier um, uh, parents evening, but only for parents for, for the children that we're very concerned about that haven't really successfully made the um, induction, made it through induction very well. And that's going to be on October the 14th, but you will be contacted by that if that's uh, by us, if that's the case. Um, and then there's going to be the year 12 reviews following the high stakes exams, and that will link into that parents evening. And there's a, a, a slide that comes up later on that's got all of the key dates on. OK, so another slide that's got all of our um, dates on it for exams. So mocks and external exams. So the first sort of date for your, for your child's calendar, are we've got mock exams um, on the 15th and 16th of December. Um, that's for the A-level cohort. And there are exams in January for many of the BTEC and CTEC students as well. And then we have in-class assessments in February um, that run into March as well. That's a kind of two week period, but that's in class. And then, as I've been mentioning, the, um, the high stakes exams, um, the 3rd to the 6th of May uh, 2022, we got the date right that time. Um, and that is for the sort of transition ex exams. OK, and then, as we said, the BTEC exam modules, we couldn't possibly have put them all on the screen because it's so different with the different subjects, but they run throughout the year. And we will run, a, uh, tutors run a revision skills programme. There will be revision set up as well by certain subject teachers during the year. And we'll tackle that in personal development as well. Okay. It's not, being at the sixth ball is not just 
about what they're going to come out with in terms of qualifications and their destinations. Being a sixth former is really exciting. It's been so great to welcome your children to our sixth form. They've been absolutely brilliant. Um, my own child has started year 12 this year and, and I know from really personal experience, they've had a really difficult two years, haven't they? Um, with not being able to do stuff at school and being in and out and lots of things being canceled and it's been very tricky for them. Their thirst for being back at school and having a rigorous kind of structure and program of things to do has been really wonderful to see and a great part of that is enrichment and things that we're offering um, as a consortium not just as a school so Mr Lou are you all right to just talk to about a few of these these are just a sample of some of the things that your child can get involved with and that we would encourage you to ask to ask them to get involved with yes uh, this year it's been uh, we have a great opportunity with a really extensive list for enrichment. Um, it, it varies through academic, work-related sports, but also volunteering work. And um, Laura actually included a link in which it will actually take you to the LASWAP website, the enrichment um, tab, and that actually shows you exactly what goes on each day uh, between the schools. But for Burley in particular, um, obviously there's Duke of Edinburgh Awards, there's Career Ready, also Ought, and this is actually um, career mentoring so there's an actual professional in a line of work in a particular field that comes to support the student with their one person statements maybe interview tips and also maybe guiding the student uh, to a particular destination depending on what uh, he or she likes um, with that uh, moving forward to sports I for one lead a lot of the sports activities at Burley um, normally on a Friday after school, 3.30 to 4.30 is our sixth form slot. So I've negotiated with um, PE and they've given us uh, access to the gymnasium, to the sports hall, to the AstroTurf, to top pitch. And um, literally whatever the kids want to do that day, whether it be badminton, football, futsal, uh, rugby, whatever it is, um, I'm always up for a challenge and um, we make sure we get that ready. Um, and yeah, there's also a cooking club on Monday period four, which I love. Yes, because... I was going to say, put a, put a shout in for the cooking club because <laughs> it's been brilliant for Monday period four. Um, we've got a group of, how many is it, Michael, at the moment? Probably only about... 10 at the moment yes, isn't it 10, but they can yeah. take take up to I think 16 can't they yeah um in the cooking space so we've got a food tech room and they basically cook their food and then eat it for lunch like it's perfect timing so that's another great thing um Liz do you want to say something briefly just about the student council just that we're both just what's happening on Monday you're muted Liz oh you're you on mute Liz Sorry. Yeah. So again, um, yeah, really important part of, of enrichment um, and, and one that students seem to be really um, excited about already is that we have a student council at Acklam Burley, um, for, which features students from year 12 and year 13. We also have a LASWAP council um, as well. And so students have been told about that um, and they should, some of them are preparing sort of speeches, hopefully as we speak, because on Monday's personal development session, they're going to, the, the students who will want to go forward as a representative are going to sort of give speeches and then they'll have a vote. And then from there, we will hopefully have like a, a really, really sort of positive and impactful student council um, where we will be meeting regularly. We, we really want them to sort of take it into their own hands as well, sort of setting the agenda um, and making sure that it is very much led by them. Um, and it's just a way of where they can actually, you know, feed into sort of how the school is run, what work we do into the community, um, any sort of volunteering, any changes that they want to see happening, um, and also across the swap. So it's been really great because when I first mentioned that in assembly, right at the start of term, I already had a lot of year 12 students coming up saying, how can I do it? What can you know? Um, will you take this number of people from each tutor group? So there's, there's loads of students want to get involved. Um, so I'm hoping that will be fantastic. So we'll be able to update you once that gets um, running and once we have our first meetings of what their focus is on and what they're going to be sort of working on. Um, but yeah, I hope this sounds really exciting so far. And this, thanks a lot, Liz. And this is in addition to this is this is kind of enrichment that we're organising, but um, at a sort of consortium and school level. But lots of subjects. And there's always been a question in the chat about trips and taking students out. And and at subject level, I know I know some people have gone already actually for some subjects um, on trips already. Um, but absolutely, now we can. Restrictions have been lifted, and we're able to get out and about. There are lots of uh, plans. It's been a real push from our head. He's wanted um, lots more trips out. 
out um, and taking students out. And um, that's something that we'll be doing a bit of, but also that the subjects are really getting involved with. So we've, for example, just booked um, some tickets to take the year um, 12 and 13 to go and see Hamlet, are the ones that are doing literature, you know. So that is ha that ha that's happening at subject level as well. Okay, Laura, over to you around not extracurricular, but supercurricular. What is that? Why is it important? <laughs> So just a quick note on supercurricular, because you'll hear us starting to talk about this more and more through the years. So whereas extracurricular are uh, activities that students do that are not related to their lessons, but are things that enrich them in terms of sports and volunteering and community work, supercurricular activities also take place outside of lessons. But these are things that have a direct academic impact that, answer, that enhance the understanding of a subject. So a trip that you might go on or a lecture you might uh, watch or an article you might read that has a direct impact on your learning and the reason that we're talking about this so early is because it is becoming increasingly important in university not just university admissions but things like apprenticeship applications that students have uh, super curricular knowledge that students are showing that they are not just uh, consuming um, you know, articles or texts that their teachers give them in lessons but that they are able to go above and beyond that they're able to seek out information themselves read widely uh, they're able to uh, find podcasts or articles on things they're interested in watch ted talks uh, they are they join they can join this club or a society uh, dedicated to the subject that doesn't have to be in school if it's something really specialist that we don't run it can be something online uh, taking part in competitions, taking engaging with content such as summer schools from universities. Now, I put summer schools in inverted commas there because they don't always take place in the summer um, and they're not always just schools. Some of them are uh, just a half day lecture or a visit to a university. Some of them are online. Some of them are a full four day residential experience um, and students can choose how much they want to engage from one hour up to you know, one week of kind of intensive uh, engagement with that subject or with that university. But we really would ask students to start thinking about developing their supercurricula from the beginning. Students who signed up to EPQ are already doing this. EPQ is a form of, of supercurricular extension and activity. Um, and I would absolutely say that in particular students who are thinking of applying to really uh, ambitious courses or ambitious universities need to put, need to get their supercurricula uh, sort of going from the beginning because they will be expected to show that kind of engagement and um, and skill. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, in the kind of same area with work experience, um, Michael, do you want to just quickly just talk about the work experience, um, the expectations? So we do expect that all of our year 12s will, um, will take take on a period of work experience and we've divided it into two different um, periods of time just because of the demands of their different kind of courses and pathways do you want to just sort of talk a bit about how we go about that Michael? yeah sure of course so um with our year 12s all of them are actually expected to take part in work experience the reason behind this is that it allows them to one uh, experience a workplace and understand what it's like to work uh two uh, it also allows them to develop soft skills skills that you wouldn't normally have unless you you're in a workplace such as etiquettes with writing an email or how to address someone that is higher up within an organization all these skills are essential for uh, i would believe um later on in life and so we, we want it to get them started now with the particular date um a level is nine uh, the 9th to the 13th of may for BTEC, uh, due to their exams and obviously in-class assessments, et cetera, they're normally later on with uh, from the 11th to the 15th, just to make sure that we don't clash. And so nearer to the date, uh, Miss Maker will actually put a um, bulletin or a notification out. And then the students, um, we, we often allow the students to find work themselves. Um, there's obviously, that's a full-time job in itself, but it gives them the autonomy to find an industry or a particular job that they would want to do and then um, they'll liaise with us for us to do our background checks, et cetera, to make sure everything is all fine. And um, that's work experience. Brilliant. That every child is actually really eager to be a part of. We've got some brilliant connections as well that we can help with. We have some absolutely fantastic ones that people have taken up, are taken us up on. Um, and there'll be even more next year because we could be able to do it, fingers crossed, um, all in, in real life. Um, OK. Um, 
I, I won't read you to talk you through all of these you can see them for yourself but it did just occur to me as michael was talking um and that last line there around around we know that it's it's you know it's a big step isn't it moving from year 11 into year 12 and we've talked about about exams and we've talked about work experience and we've talked about enrichment but actually we haven't talked to you about something that's really important which is about kind of emotional well-being um, and I wonder if it might be, I might just come back to you, um, Michael, just to talk about the role, if you just explain to the parents kind of your role with our students and what you sort of offer our students in terms of support for their for their mental health and what else we do in, in school. I mean, you don't have to go into everything, but but just just what do you tell the students that they can, um, how they can access you and the support you provide? So um, a unique part of my role is that I have a non-teaching role, therefore I'm always around school. Um, I have an open door policy and that is a way to build relationship with the students. Um, this actually allows me to then uh, have that relationship, have one-to-ones if necessary, but also um, be a trustworthy adult where students come to approach to then also disclose information. From there, I will then, um, the normal process is I will assess the situation and understand what parties need to be involved, whether it be safeguarding, whether it be CAMs, whether it be actually just having a conversation with the parent to find out more. And so at every step of that, I will actually always keep the parents involved so you understand what exactly is happening in school. And um, within the Key Stage 5 team, we're, we're really great at being able to pick up students that may have maybe um, ha having a rough day and then we find out there's something more to that. And um, that is my essential role. It's just actually for the well-being of the students. That's why I run a lot of physical activities simply because I know that links to mental health and just having someone there to, to talk, which is provides a non-judgment, uh, non I guess, um, space that allows them to actually feel comfortable enough to, to, to to disclose information and so um, I am here for the kids I'm here for their mental health and uh, physical well-being and um, I'm the first port of call regarding all that matter within the sixth form simply due to my job role of non-teaching so I see them um, regularly. Thank you Michael and if there, if you are sitting there and thinking oh actually I think it's really important that the, the, the Key Stage 5 team know this about my child um, do do drop Michael an email or any one of us an email or um, you can copy in as many of us as you wish to it, it, however small it might seem if it's something that's worrying you about them it's much better that we know it really is much better that we know because um, then we can we can help them and, and, and structure our kind of um, interactions with them accordingly so do do please um, don't don't think it's insignificant um, if you're worried about it then then we can help you with that okay um, so do keep in touch to find out more Laura anything to say about the YouTube channel or anything like that anything we need to add on to there just it's it, obvious, isn't it? It's quite straightforward. We just the main things that we put on there. We occasionally put assemblies and things on there, but there's also uh, sort of UCAS how to. Um, there's anything like this that we do, which is a, a kind of webinar or any information for parents, and that will be things like this general one, and also towards the end of year twelve and into year thirteen, things like how to apply for university, how to navigate student finance. Um, anything we do like this will all go onto that YouTube channel. Um, of course, there is our uh, our normal website um which has all the information about the school and the swap website which i have managed to miss off there uh but if you do google the swap it will it will be the first thing that comes up um and the swap website has uh, obviously contact details for uh, central staff at the swap it has information about all of our courses um and it also has the enrichment information that liz and michael spoke about earlier um and of course if there's something that you can uh, something you cannot find the answer to please do email us um all of our email addresses are uh are the same format so it's the same for all the staff it's our first initial and our surname at acklenburley.camden.sch.uk uh, so please do uh as they always feel free to get in touch brilliant and one thing that i just occurred to me we'll leave up the autumn key dates there um for you to have a look at but one thing that did occur to me is um if any of your uh children had free school meals when they were in um year, lower school in year 11 um do you it doesn't just roll over to year 12 so do um they can we've, we've talked to them about it in assembly but if they if you're entitled to free school meals in year 11 you need to reapply for year 12 it's really worth doing it because um that means if you get free school meals in um uh year 12 
um, you will be entitled to our um, educational bursary, um, which is um, about £10 a week. It gets paid to directly to the student um, based on their attendance. It's linked to attendance. Um, so that is the only criteria is that the family receive free school meals. So please, please um, do um, ask your child to come and get a form. Um, we've given loads of them out already um, because it's, it's absolutely um, crucial. We capture as many people as possible on that. It doesn't just roll up. I think some people just think if they've had that in year 12, 11, it just automatically rolls up. And the other thing I would say about that that doesn't automatically roll up is access arrangements. If you know that your child got extra time in exams for whatever reason, maybe they're dyslexia or dyscalculia or whatever, um, then it doesn't automatically just roll up. We might need to do a re we will need to do a reassessment. Um, so do again, make sure that they have told us or if you wish to just email us about that. OK, so what we're going to do now is we will um, go back so we can see people's faces. Oh, somebody else has just said, do they have planners and show my homework? They do have planners. They don't actually have logins to show my homework, which we use um, just because of the fact that the four schools don't all use show my homework. Um, so it means that you can't get logins for all of the students because our students are drawn from all of the four schools. So what teachers tend to do is use um, teams. And once Teams is up and running, we've had some really um, gnarly technical issues um, in the first couple of weeks. But once um, every school, every uh, teacher has their um, Teams classroom up and running, then um, homework and assignments will be put onto Teams. OK, so the format now is um, if you feel like you've heard everything you want to hear and you do feel free to um to leave it's been great to have so many of you um in the in the presentation um if you wish to stay on turn your camera on you can unmute if laura lets you i don't know um if you want to ask any, <laughs> she's, she's unmuted you. um if you want to um, ask us any questions um then we'll stay for the next sort of 10 minutes or so um so if anyone wants to ask any questions then that's absolutely fine um okay. Sorry, can just... I ask one question? I'm of course. Sorry. Um, can you just bring up that list again with the um, teachers' numbers? Uh, yes. Uh, two yeah, seconds. of course. Uh, while I am uh, doing that, there were just two questions in the chat about EPQ. Uh, one was about will students get to look at past EPQs? Yes, they definitely will. That's done as part of the teaching uh, that we look at uh, EPQs from students um, at Ackland Burley and also EPQs that are provided by the exam board and so students get to look at a, a big range of different topics and titles and uh, EPQs um, and the other one was about EPQ lessons uh, the EPQ, le EPQ lessons are on teams but they don't start until next week uh, partly because of the, some of the delays that we've had with uh, with setting up teams that have, have we've not been able to to resolve until quite recently uh, but EPQ is now timetabled and the EPQ lessons start next week they uh, just to repeat they are usually on teams the exception is the students who have a Monday EPQ lesson that will be in school on Monday the 4th but the students who have the Wednesday and Thursday lesson that will be on teams as normal next week sorry that is a little bit confusing uh, but EPQ lessons do begin next week uh, there was also I've, oh sorry go on yeah I've got a question after that as well just there was also a question about uh, if a student only has a lesson period five um, on a particular day do they have to be in school before that no they don't they don't have to come into school before that uh, but they are more than welcome to if they wish to use our study space and our study area indeed we would encourage them to do so but no there is no requirement for them to be in school uh, before their lesson. I would really, um, I would say to that one, I would have a conversation with your child about where actually they are able to work best and where they are making the most of their kind of study time. Because I, I know many students of sort of 16, 17 years old actually home need what they want as home and school can be school. 
Um, and and sometimes they really struggle with kind of um, making very effective use of, of home for uh, an effective sp study space, certainly for that kind of length of time when there are, you know, other distractions and, you know, whatever, the dog that needs a walk or what, all those other things. If you can get them into good habits of, of actually using a, a study space, that might be our common room, it might be the library. Lots of them you go and use different libraries in Camden as well, and that's really quite interesting. They find some good places to, to, to work. Um, that would be much more positive. And we do actually say with some students, if we find after a period of time that they are not actually keeping up with their work, we insist they come in. We, we, we say that they don't have that kind of flexibility of just being able to come in for their lessons. Um, I had a question. Is it, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Go on. Is there ever, ever going to be a time that the parents can come and see where the children are actually at? Yeah, and uh, of course you haven't actually, <laughs> actually, actually seen. No, it. Uh, no, of course. Um, if uh, that's a really good, that's a really good point. Actually, if you if you wanted to do that, um, do you want to just send me an email and we'll see if we can. Um, uh, if we can sort something out because I totally appreciate you haven't actually been to see us and visit us. No, um, so your your name is. My, I'm Anna sorry. Remington. Yeah. Anna. Anna. Yeah. So A Remington. Okay. And then that's and that's um at Acton Burley. I'll put it in the in the chat. Yeah. As well. Yeah, because it would be quite nice to see actually where she is. <laughs> of course, I totally understand that. And actually, we've we've tried to do everything online in terms of this kind of thing, just because it's so much more convenient for people. But I yeah. totally appreciate you because we didn't have an open evening or anything. You don't actually no. know where we are. Um, so um, if there are a few people um, that want to do that, we could maybe do a little kind of visit. Um, even if it's just you, you can come in. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that was do, fine. Yeah. That's fine. But if anyone else wants to come in as well, and we could do that because, yeah, nice, to, funny otherwise isn't it to, to not to not know where your child's actually no it's be, not yeah 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 sure crazy <laughs> <laughs> okay um I had a question in the chat to me which was is there going to be a copy of the presentation yes there absolutely is it will be on the Ackland Burley website um under the uh sixth form area and is it do you share it anywhere else or I can never remember uh, where you put it no, it just goes there. So I can yeah. the website sixth form area but there will be a reminder of that in the family bulletin next week. Yeah. And again, if no one if if anyone is not getting the family bulletin, which comes out every Friday, it's got stuff for lower school, but there's always a section on uh, key stage five, then please email um, Miss Lyons, who I am going to um, put her uh, email address in the bottom in the chat. Um, and she will make sure that all your details are added. And um, presumably because you've got this link, it means you are getting our emails. But um, uh, just in case you are not getting the bulletin as well. If uh, anybody can't find the presentation on the website, by the way, uh, again, just email us and we'll send you a copy of it. But they are quite hefty. Uh, so in, you, and our emails don't always support big extensions. So we do put it on the website to make it easier. And the recording goes uh, on the YouTube channel? Is on the YouTube channel, which will be linked to in the Family Bulletin. OK, that's brilliant. OK, any other questions that have come through for anyone? Laura, have you got any more? Let me just check. Uh, can students still join EPQ classes? Uh, they could as of today. Uh, today we have had to, well, yesterday actually afternoon, we've had to close the EPQ classes because we have 70 EPQ students at the moment, uh, <laughs> which is a huge amount. Uh, so we've actually had to close the classes because we simply can't take any more. Uh, however, we always have some dropouts in EPQ. Uh, we have some students who decide it's not for them. So uh, I would ask students if they are still keen towards the end of this term to get back in touch. And there will be some uh, movement around the classes. There will be a bit of catch up to work work to do. But if they are keen, then they will definitely be able to catch up if if they want to. But for now, EPQ is is sadly uh, is, is closed at the moment. Brilliant. Um, I don't have any more questions. If there's anything else, please feel free to, uh, to stick around. But otherwise, we will. Uh... Yeah, thank you so much for coming. I hope you found it useful and informative. And yes, um, thank you. Do No, pl absolute pleasure. Do keep in contact with us with any other concerns that you have. We okay, do just thank you. Um, oh, we oh. have got a hand up if. Uh, Oops. Sonali. Me... Yeah, oh, yes. I just wanted to, sorry, hi. I just wanted to have a private question at the end of the session. That's fine. Yes. Once we that's finish, that's I'll absolutely stop. fine. We'll just um, once everyone's um, else has left, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. I'll stop the recording. All right. Everyone, when All right bye. Gone. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you.
<laughs> thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank